All right, folks, so speaking of skills, this is going to be a largely informative video. Um, I've been getting asked some questions, and I really appreciate those, by the way. Please keep them coming. But, you know, sometimes I, I tend, my mind gets a little bit of tunnel vision, and, you know, I start getting all twisted up around all the complexities of the game, and then I totally forget to talk about the basic stuff. So, folks, if you're a new player and, you know, You've been following along with my videos. Thank you so much for sticking with. And um, if you've been wondering this, that, or the other, hopefully this video will help to clear that up a little bit. All right, so first thing is first. This perk tree, guys, this can be very intimidating. And I know I mentioned this in my intro video, you know, that I would walk you through this in time, and I will. You know, if, if you follow the, the entire series through, it'll make sense as it goes. But, you know, for folks just kind of wanting some quick help here, I'll try to tell you how I make these decisions, what I base them on, and, um, you know, just kind of to my play style. For example, I love the bow and arrow in this game. I know how to get this thing super strong, super fast. So you can see I'm already dumping a whole bunch of perk points into my archery. So, you know, as soon as I hit level 60, bam, one more goes right there, and that's going to bump it another 20% in attack power. So in addition to that, I'm also slowing down time and zooming in with Eagle Eye and Steady Hand. So it's it's pretty comparable to Breath of the Wild in that respect. You can really slow time down, especially if you activate that second one, Wowzers. Um, in fact, I don't like that. It's like it slows it down too much. Uh, you know, me personally, I, I stick with just the one. Uh, but you know, when you hit level 60 on your bow, you can absolutely dump that other perk in there and see how you feel. And I absolutely get that power shot that staggers opponents. That's super helpful. And when the time comes, quick shot. And at, the, at that point, I'm kind of done with my bow. Um, the only other thing I'll do is I'll put one more in there when it turns 80. And that, basic, that essentially doubles the damage of the bow at 100%. Uh, that critical shot, I don't personally really use it. Um, you can sometimes, you know, you, you can get them to take a knee. If you dump all three in there, it, it makes it a little stronger. But me personally, I just didn't feel like it was worth the perk points for that. Uh, the Hunter's Discipline recovered twice as many arrows. Again, you know, you can just craft your own. That's not a, a you know, worthy of a perk point. Ranger. Now that one I did like. I am not going to lie. But, you know, you've got to burn two perk points on things I don't want just to get there. So, you know, in my mind, just getting that ranger opened up, that's three freaking perk points. So to me, if I really, really wanted that, that would be a way, way, way later game thing uh, after I've already, you know, utilized these perk points in other places. So, guys, you got to play to your play style. If you're not a bow and arrow guy or a lady, um, you know, and you like the one-handed weapons, the two-handed weapons, uh, you know, you've got to put the perks where they benefit you in your play style. So now if you're a new player and you don't, don't really know what that is, you might want to just go ahead and forego dumping a bunch of perk points into anything for right now. Uh, play the game for a while, you know, use the weapons, see how you feel, see what feels more natural, see what you rely on more, and then you can start dumping some perk points in. And by that time, you know, you'll have it leveled up uh, considerably enough to be able to, you know, put perks where you want. Now on that note, save the game before you do any, any perk point shopping. Uh, reason being is if you dump them all in there and then you want to go out and test it and you're just not feeling all the perks you dumped into there and you're just not, you know, feeling the benefit of it, you can always reload that save and, uh, you know, you'll have those perks back to apply elsewhere. Uh, or, you know, you might get out there and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm really glad I unlocked this one, but I really don't care about that one. Once again, you can, you know, go back to that save, uh, put, the, put the perk points in exactly where you want them to be, and then, you know, you'll save yourself from having wasted any. All right, so that's combat. Now, as far as the other stuff goes, again, again, guys, this is overwhelming and, you know, there's a lot to this. But me personally, in the beginning of the game, notice I'm only level 17. Um, right now, I am all about leveling my character. So for me, I prioritize the perks into the things I do to level my character. And guys, I got this down to a real science. So that's alchemy. That is enchanting. Now, I don't have a lot of perks dumped into there yet, but I will here real, real soon. A couple more level ups here, and I'm going to get working on my enchanting. Um, smithing. I, I kind of do that in tandem with enchanting. So now on the smithing wheel, guys, 
Uh, I like to have that unlocked, but it's not an absolute priority right now. That'll come later, but that'll help you to upgrade weapons that are already enchanted, so that's nice to have. Uh, and armor, by the way. So you can go two directions on this wheel, and guys, personally, I recommend going this way. For one, you get better attack power going this direction, and when you get up to Ebony Smithing, you can uh, go to Solstheim and unlock... Uh, stall rim smithing and guys that's it if you wonder where all this is going in my videos so far <laughs> we are going right to this time I mean not like right now but very soon in the game and we will be getting that that whole quest line done until we get up to that that stall rim smithing and guys you know we're gonna be crafting weapons with that stuff and we're not even that powerful yet uh, on my next round of smithing and character leveling, we're going to like triple our attack power that we have right now. It's going to be sick. After that, we're going to do it again with Orcish. Uh, and this is all on the way. So um, what I would recommend doing is once you start getting into your smithing, open up steel, go right to Dwarven, buy some ingots, craft some good bows, re-enchant them. When you get the level up, hit Orcish. Do the same thing. Craft some Orcish bows or, you know, whatever weapons you like. Uh, get them upgraded, get them enchanted. And then Ebony, I completely skipped that because by that time I'm getting into Soul's Time and I'm getting that, uh, that Stall Rim unlocked. So you still have to burn the perk point here to unlock that Stall Rim, but I won't actually do anything with Ebony. I'll do it all with Stall Rim. And that's another building material, in, in just, case, just in case you were wondering. Uh, Stall Rim and Ebony both, they craft different weapons. But guys, that Stall Rim, it, it just... It, it has damage bonuses on it, and it's just, that's really where it's at. All right, so now the reason I don't go off to the left is because there's really, I mean, I do like the elven weapons. Don't get me wrong. Later on in the game, I might spoil myself, you know, and, and do some elven smithing. Maybe. We'll see. I don't always do that. I just kind of like the way they look, and they're decent on attack power. But honestly, you know, once you get that star rim stuff going, this is really low-hanging fruit. So that's why I say sometimes I like to do it just to play with it, but it's not really the way I go for the game. Not only that, it wastes a perk point. Uh, you know, you already need uh, three of them, or say four of them, to get all the way up to Ebony. If you do play with that Elven, you know, then the perk point's burnt. All right, guys, advanced armors. You know, again, I don't use it. That's like the Chitin armor that you're going to get in Solstheim and some other things. Glassmithing, eh, it's not for me. Dragon armor, eh, not for me. Uh, Daedric smithing, now, nah, I'm not going to lie, that's pretty fun. Uh, it's real hard for me to give up that stall rim stuff. So, you know, the Daedric, maybe that's just a very, very late stage game kind of thing when you don't carry about, you know, all the weight. Now, you know, same thing with dragon armor. Uh, some of that stuff can be real, real heavy. Now, there's perks in, like, the heavy armor section, for example, that can help you with that. But again, <laughs> you're spending more perk points. So, um, you know, that that's why I say just, you know, beginning of the game especially... Hold your perk points back until you know what weapons you want. Um, hold your perk points back on the crafting stuff until you're really starting to get into it. You know, I'm level 17 and I'm just about there. Um, the stuff I've been doing beforehand was mostly the alchemy. And that was so that I could, you know, just craft a whole bunch of dummy potions, go out, pick a whole bunch of flowers. And, you know, bumping that up now gets those things selling better. So now I, I'll kind of hold off on that until I start getting into my, again, enchanting and smithing. And then I'll want these potions to be as strong as possible. And then I'll unlock this benefactor. Potions you mix which with beneficial effects have 25% greater magnitude. So now that will actually scratch that. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I, I never get this right in my head. Either that does work for things like smithing and enchanting or it doesn't. And again, guys, I apologize. I can never, ever keep that straight in my head which way that goes. So, you know, at some point in my game, I'll test that out, and then you'll know. But uh, for now, just, you know, save the game, craft a smithing potion, uh, save the game again, and um, put that perk point in. Whoops. Put that perk point in, craft another smishing, smithing potion, compare the two, and go from there. All right, guys, now, whoops. I started talking a little bit about enchanting 
And again, this is going to come later, but for right now, you know, early game, um, I will eventually creep my way up to Frost, because that's my go-to enchantment right now is Frost enchantments. Uh, but, you know, as I build my, my, my skill up, enchanting, I'm at 48 right now, which is not bad. <laughs> we haven't even done that much work on it, but... Um, Anyway, I really like to focus on that because at some point, and you know, you're going to level while you're getting each individual skill up, um, you know, your character continues to level. So more and more perk points continue coming in while you're working on a particular skill. So anyway, yeah, enchanting, that's one of the sooner things I like to work on because of that extra effect. So you, you can put, you know, if you really wanted to, you could put soul enchantment and then frost enchantment, same bow, bam. So, you know, you're getting all those attack damage bonuses from the frost damage, and you're still doing your soul trapping. Or if you really want to, you know, just make the attack power sick, you can do something like uh, flame damage and frost damage. Or, you know, you can do something that absorbs. Or you can do just a number of things. Um, paralysis. So, like, you can do frost damage and paralysis, which is kind of funny to watch. Um, so, you know, just a number of things, um, that extra effect really comes in handy. Not only that, you can craft, say, a ring, and you can put, you know, real good, uh, smithing enchantment on it, and then real good, uh, say, alchemy enchantment on it. So then you can wear that one ring, and that's affecting both your alchemy stat and your smithing stat while you're working on those and wearing that ring at the same time. And the great thing about that is they all stack. So you can do a ring that way, a necklace that way, uh, you know, the bracers that way. Just whatever you're crafting, uh, you can put two enchantments on it. Wow. Okay, so the schools of magic, I would kind of caution against dumping a bunch of perks into these, especially early game. Uh, that should come later after you're done getting your character leveled up to, you know, a place where you feel good, confident, healthy, and happy. Uh, you know, you feel capable in combat, you're crafting strong stuff, you're enchanting strong stuff, um, you know, you're crafting good strong potions uh, with alchemy, and you know, you're, you're getting some points dumped into whatever your combat is of choice. Uh, only then would I even consider, you know, going into some magic. If you're a really heavy user on magic, uh, you know, you might want to throw a couple of perk points that way. Um, you can also consider, you know, armor if you just, if you, if you don't like, uh, how beefy your character is and you feel like you take too much damage. Now, I personally go light armor all the way. Uh, I hate the weight, and like I said, there's a perk point in here somewhere where you can, you know, reduce the weight. Okay, so there it is. But, you know, that again, perk points, guys. Um, so you just have to kind of think about stuff like that. Um, so that's why I personally like to go the light armor. Because um, you don't necessarily have to dump a, a bunch of perk points in there to get decent armor. And it just doesn't weigh nearly as much as the heavier armor does. Uh, not only that, it doesn't cost a ton of perk points to get the, um, the damage bonus or the, the, the set bonus. So a couple of videos ago, I got, uh, uh, what is it, the Force Horn set, the bracers, the headwear, the footwear, and the, the body armor. So if, as long as you're wearing all four pieces, you'll get that 25% bonus. So, you know, two perk points, and that already bumps your armor up a significant amount uh, as compared to what you would have to do for the other, considering the weight issue. Now, that being said, there is another perk point that I usually like to get to, you know, when I have the, the perk points to spare. And that's here. It weighs nothing and doesn't slow you down one more. And that's pretty awesome. Just kind of makes you feel a little bit more free and able to move. Now, again, if you're wearing that set, there's another bonus here you can get. Pretty cool there. Regenerates your stamina even faster. So if you know for a fact you're always going to be walking around in a full set, these set bonuses might be worthwhile for you to think about unlocking at some point. You know, again, this isn't critical early game stuff here. This is as you go after the more important stuff's already taken care of. So this is the same kind of deal, it just adds additional if you're wearing a full set. And you know, that whole thing there, I don't know, you'd have to... It depends on your play style, what weapons you like using, and whether you're not, you know, you feel like that 10% is worth it. So, um... 
that's armor in a nutshell. Sneak, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory here. The more perks you dump into sneak and the better you get your sneak skill up, the more you'll be able to kind of crouch down and maneuver around enemies without them knowing you're there. Uh, in addition, you can plug them with arrows from a distance, and again, the better that sneak skill and the better your perks are in here, uh, the more you'll be able to plug people with arrows and they still won't be able to find you. It's pretty funny at some point uh, when you get your skill up just, you know, ridiculously high. But again, guys, you know, probably a later th game thing. Uh, lock picking. Personally, I don't bother with it. Um, I don't find they're worth the perks unless it's way late in the game, and I literally know what... I, I'm running out of ideas on what to do with my perks, and I might dump some into lock picking. But all that really does is it gives you... A, um, it makes it easier for... Uh, hiccups makes it easier for you to find the sweet spot when you're lock picking. But again, I just I didn't feel like the benefit it gave me outweighed the perk points I spent. Uh, Pickpocket uh, important for one reason. Um, so you'll have to spend three perk points to unlock it. But guys, 100 extra freaking pounds of carry weight. So again, not a super critical early game, you know, urgent matter. But yeah, at some point you'll see me starting to dump perk points in to get myself that unlocked. Speech. Yes, I already dumped one in there just to help with my buying and selling prices a little bit. Uh, early game, I pr probably wouldn't recommend going over that because it's easy enough to make money with the method, you know, with the cooking potions and all that. So, you know, yeah, right now I try to hold off until you get to 50 in your speech. Reason being is you can unlock that, you know, sell any type of item to any merchant. And guys, that just really, really just makes it ten times easier. You can take your your inventory full of potions, and then you can visit all the mages on the map, and you can sell them the potions to get the money back for all the soul, soul gems you're buying. So I do consider that, you know, relatively early game important. But, uh, you know, it takes a while to get your speech up that high. So about the time my speech is getting up there, then I'll start paying attention uh, to, you know, perks going into that spot. Okay, I already talked about the magic stuff. Oh, one more thing on enchanting. That stacks with some of the magic stuff. So, you know, again, not critical early game, but when I really, really want to get my enchanting up for that frost spell that I like to put on weapons, that stacks with destruction. And all of them do, by the way. All the destruction stuff on this wheel. So if you want to do flame... If you want to do frost, if you want to do spark or storm or whatever, electricity, all those stack with the destruction school of magic, particularly these three right here, augmented shock, augmented frost, and augmented flames. That fire spells do 25% more damage stacks with the enchantment on the weapon. So, you know, again, not super critical early game, but when I really want to start getting my enchantments just crazy strong, I will definitely move into destruction and start amping those up as well. All right, guys, I know, you know, I, I, I've been back and forth whether or not I, I wanted to cover a lot of this stuff, you know, this early in the game. And honestly, I, I said to myself, no, it's going to be information overload. You know, people that are new to the game, it's just going to be too much. So, guys, what I'm going to say at this point is if your head is already spinning, don't sweat it. You heard the information, don't feel like you have to memorize it all right now. What I would recommend doing, play the game for a while, you know? Uh, as you're playing the game and things happen in your game and, you know, perks are, are coming up and you're, you're dumping stuff in, uh, some of these things will kind of come back to you. And, you know, at some point, if, if you're stuck, you know uh, feel free to rewatch the video again at the time and, you know, just kind of get a refresher and, you know, that should help you out. But you can reset the perks at some point. So if you're worried about your perks, you know, and making a mistake, once you get that skill up to 100, you can reset it. It's called Legendary, and then it puts it down to the, the default. So, you know, then it would say I got my Illusion up to 100. Uh, then I could do that Legendary thing, and it bumps it back down to 15, but you get all the perk points back that you dumped into Illusion. So then you have to, you know, build the whole skill back up all over again. But you get the perk points back in the in the immediate time, so you can put them elsewhere. Then as you're working to build that skill back up, you'll get more, per more perk points as you level. And then you can rebuild that skill that you went legendary on. 